So what happens is I go for a walk. I go for a walk on the Chicago River Walk while I'm on um, while I'm on this trip. Quite beautiful, right? It's quite nice, you know. Chicago is not quite Peru or Canada or India, but we have some nice, you know, we have some nice scenes. I can understand some Telugu. Yeah. So I go on this walk in the middle of the tournament and I ask myself, what would, what would be the natural way to play? You know, don't try to force anything. Just let's try to engage in the game, breathe in the game as if we're breathing in the waters of the river walk in the waters of the river walk. Don't necessarily you know, the waters of the river walk or something, but like, okay, this is the spirit that I'm in. So then I play this next game, part two of the trip against who becomes good friend of mine, Matthew Stevens. Let's see how this game goes. D4, D5, you know, we go into some weird Trumpovsky stuff. So I play c5 here, trying to seize control of the queen side. a3. e3. Okay with taking this. Let's just play our game. Now I go bishop g3. After the queen commits to d8. And so this is very different actually from... Like, this is very different from the fluid position that we had before. Although, is it so different? Because, you know, we do have this locked up center, but there's there are some droplets of water to be seen here. So, castle. Black's trying to play e5, very clear. So, we play b4, a5, b5, expand in on the queen side rookie eight so what do we do to stop e5 we play queen c3 simple and we're just slowly squeezing b6 we've got a nice control of this diagonal and we're holding on to uh why queen c3 not queen b2 to get onto the third rank honestly i wanted to play queen c3 to keep an eye out on this uh, pawn just that it just seemed a little bit more high utility than queen b2 to me um so we've got this right and watch so takes he takes because he wants to play e5 but he starts to doubt himself because e5 maybe i take here maybe i take and then i take so he plays rook a8 and then now we go bishop c7 this is actually ends up being some tricky stuff so queen e7 we do the repeat bishop d6 queen d8 we go bishop c7 i want to see what black's intentions are black decides to play for a win with queen c8 all right white to move chat this is one of the most proud moves um i i'm this is one of the moves i'm like the most happy to have made in my chess career it's one of those like very subtle moves that are hard to kind of see at first glance, but make a lot of sense in retrospect. So I think this is a very instructive moment, right? What were we talking about? Like what is Black's play here? Let's flip the board real quick. What is Black's way of playing this position? What would you do if you're Black if you could? E5 is the move that the Black has in mind here. Um, because e5 really like opens up the queen it opens up the knight it creates a lot of um put it converts a lot of the potential energy in the position for for black into you know maybe kinetic energy we don't know yet but it converts it into some 
potentially kinetic energy. So e5 is the move that the black is going for. Now let's flip the board, and someone has said the correct answer already. What is white's move to prevent e5? Bishop e5 is an idea. Bishop e5, we but but when we play bishop e5, we give up this beautiful bishop to fix the pawns, and we don't know if we'll have a breakthrough. It's not bishop e5. Someone did say the move. I will say someone did say the move earlier. E4 is an idea, but I think like E4 could be a little bit risky. You know, it's unclear what happens after E5 for black there. Very unclear what happens in that position. No, concrete. Try to think concrete. How do we concretely deal with E5? There's a way. It's actually this very quiet looking move bishop g4 one of the proudest moves i've ever made bishop g4 i was so happy by how elegant this move is because like let's just look you know if white plays e5 and i can't um i can't i can't move it on this uh, interface unfortunately but if e5 let's try to calculate we can just take with the pawn because bishop takes bishop takes and if rook takes, we do bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, queen takes e5, we're up a rook. This is a, this is a very, it's a pin. This is a next level pin. This is a tripping on some LSD gummies level pin. Bishop g4. Yeah, no, no, this is a hard move to see. It's a very unusual looking move, bishop g4. But it's one that I was very happy to have played. So, um, my opponent starts to see. He understands he can't play e5 and he's in a little bit of a bind. So, g6, and then we play f4. Because now, after h5, bishop f3, we don't have the pin any longer, but we have a complete bind on e5. So, bishop g7, bishop f3, and yo, chat, the rest of this, like, if I ever played, like, Karpov, this is my Karpov game. And remember, this is after the, uh, the, 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 the trippy river walk, you know, like, just insert any pictures, like, we're walking along the river. This was the uh, this was the context before the game. Okay. So f5, you know, as black, you know, let's just look at this as black. You know, as black, you're trying to limit white's play, right? This bishop's on c7, very annoying, and there's not really a clear way to untangle. So it's a tough position for black for sure. So uh, g4, we push on. Knight f6. Rook a2. Can someone tell me the idea behind rook a2? This idea with rook a2 is actually very straightforward. Rook a2 to g2. Exactly. It's just rook a2 to g2. We, you know, we sometimes forget how quickly the rooks can go to the other side of the board. Yeah, the, the rooks can move to the other side of the board quite quickly. And so a simple move like rook a2 can uh can set up rook g2 way faster than like you know the linear rook e1 rook e2 rook g2 just play rook a2 it's the geometry of the pieces okay so rook a2 king h7 rook g2 and all of a sudden this rook from here is just all in the attack knight e4 queen e1 queen d7 king h1 I played king h1 here because I thought that, like, I want to double up here, and it will be useful, guaranteed. Bishop f6, rook fg1, queen e7, takes, we take because we have doubled rooks and we're about to enter. Bishop h5 first, though. We play bishop h5 first. 
because we want to have a stronghold on this g6 square. Rook g8, bishop g6 check, king h8, queen e2. Now, I want to just go back a couple of moves before we before we show like the final end of this game. Look at this queen. The queen is trying to enter onto the king side, but it's not so easy with this like very static and fixated pawn structure. So I, I really like, you know, this queen e1, queen e2 idea. It's all connected. Queen e2 now. The queen's coming into h5. The queen was on c3 trying to figure out how to get into the king side. And um, the rest is very nice. Queen h5. Knight f6, queen h4. So now the knight can't move anywhere because it's pinned to the queen. What this game looks like is how Leela used to beat Stockfish. Yeah, except um, Leela didn't have a gummy in their system. Bishop d6, queen d7, bishop e5. So we, we, we just kick the queen away from the knight just so we can uh, attack it with tempo. And if the knight moves, for example, like knight e4, just note that queen takes h6 is actually checkmate because bishop takes h6 is not possible because of the pin. So rook c f8, rook g5, queen e7. And I'll, I'll give you guys the opportunity to find the, find the final move that ended the game. White to move. All of the pieces are attacking. If I go to Chicago, I'll take a bath on that magic river. Oh, dude, that magic river is probably not good for taking a bath. White to move, chat. What would you play here? Okay. So, yeah. The final move in this position is rook h5. Why is rook h5 decisive, chat? Just look at black's pieces. Knight takes h5 doesn't work because queen takes e5, and if bishop takes e5, queen h7 is checkmate. Rook h5. We're threatening straight up rook takes h6, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, queen h7, queen takes h7 is checkmate because the knight is pinned to the king. There's nothing, that, there's nothing that black can do here. It's just dead lost. If Let's say rook f7... Rook takes h6, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, rook h7, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen takes h7 is checkmate. Yeah, this is my trippy immortal. I've had a couple of games like this, but like... And I guess it just goes to show chat that like, you know... But if you're trying to get a little freaky deaky and you're trying to use it to inspire your chess game, um, it can. It can, definitely. I, like, I've kind of viewed myself more, like, I've evolved as a chess player over the years where, like, I appreciate the art more than I appreciate the science. And they're all obviously, like, quite interlinked. But there's some objectivity to the aesthetics of chess that lend themselves to concrete calcula calculation lines. And I think this game is like a very good demonstration of that.